uh, fancy seeing you here. Magandang umaga, mga kaibigan. We are here in the beautiful island of Bohol, but specifically Panglawar, a resort is. And today we are going to be doing a Bohol countryside tour that we booked through our resort. We're going to explore the chocolate hills, see the tar shears, and obviously eat some good food too. Yes, so, I'm very excited. excited. Are you ready? Yes. All right, let's go. Our driver stops for gas. We are actually going to the Chocolate Hills first, which is around an hour 45 minute drive from Panglao because you know we got to do the furthest destination first. And then there's a lot of different destinations that you can do, and also a lot of optional activities that we might opt in for, but obviously for extra cost. So, Chocolate Hills time. Dalawang ATV, isang buggy. Are you ready? Do you feel the need? The need for speed? Yeah, I do too. We're here at Graham ATV and Buggy Rentals. Basically, you ride the ATV buggy through the chocolate hills. We booked two ATVs and one buggy. The buggy is where you can like drive two people. We're gonna do the ATVs first. I've never driven one. We'll and, see. If we we'll die, have... then that's fine. As long as we, have, we died having fun. Anyway, that's oh, good. I look like a dweeb. <laughs> yeah. There's a few steps up in Bud Agtao. We actually got to climb one of the chocolate hills. The view, I must say, it is amazing. They look like little Hershey's Kisses. They're kind of a bit brown right now, the signature chocolate color. Oh, I'm, still, I'm still out of breath. How was the ATV? How was the buggy, MB? It was fine. I was a bit intimidated at the beginning because the path is like really rough. So I was like, oh no, I'm gonna fall. But it was actually fine. But yes, it's amazing. Like, you, know, you can even see like the path that we've been going through and all the rice paddies <laughs> below. Okay, we're just gonna appreciate some of this view and then we're gonna swap and then my parents are gonna do the ATVs and we're gonna do the buggies now. One, two, three, jump. Good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Buggy time, everyone. Get in. Except you're not even driving. I'm not driving. Look at that, Yanby. You got the rice field. You got the chocolate field. Go oh. on, Yanby. Switch. Switch. It's your turn to drive. It's your well, turn to drive. This is nice being driven for once. Look at that. She's a bit of an extreme girly. She's an outdoor girly. See that? There's. There's the. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, I mean, it's underwater time. Yeah. Take it slow. <laughs> oh, it's flooding. It's flooding. Oh my God. Yeah, so, how was it? It was really fun, you know, I started off intimidated and then I ended fearful. 
Wait, no, wait. Fear? Wait, no, I was, what was the word? Fearless. Fearless. Right. But now, now we're gonna go to the Chocolate Hills uh, complex. Complex. So let's go. That was an easy 220 steps to the uh, main summit, like the main viewing platform of the Chocolate Hills Complex. Here you can see like so much more of the uh, Hershey's Kisses uh, Chocolate Hills. Um, these very unique conical karst formations uh, made by the uh, dissolution of limestone by rain and erosion by streams and water. It is so picturesque and unique, truly like unlike anything we've ever seen before. You know, there are actually 1,200 to 1,700 of these chocolate hills, but it depends on how you count them because you'll see some of them that have um, vegetation on top, so it's not those signature like bare brown hills. So it just depends on how you count it. What are we doing now? I think we're just going to continue to... Yeah, now it's on to some cute little tar shears. Um, so if you heard that, that is the announcement for the Lobok River cruise and lunch. I'm hungry and I'm quite tired. Yeah, it's actually been a very packed morning. We literally did like how many activities. And it's now like... It's Twelve. Well, it's almost one. It's almost one. So there, it hasn't actually been that much time. So it's been like activity, activity, activity. But Hopefully, we are going to be revived by the breezy uh, river cruise and lunch. It's kind of like an amusement park ride where you wait your turn until your boat arrives. It's like 124 right now or 141. Um, yeah, let's eat. Started on the barbecue pork, but it's mm, it's like sweet, salty, really good. Oh, pancit. Mm. Salty, a little sweet. Got a bit of that calamansi tang. Classic. Some lechon. Oh, we're starting to move. Feel the beauty of the majestic Lubok River as we entertain you and all you have to do is just sit back and enjoy your meal. So for those who want all the additional drinks, we have that on the counter. For my spread, yeah, and me, come down here. Um, a very beautiful, uh, also got some pansit, some some barbecue, some some langka, some ginataang langka, one of my favorite dishes of all time. Lechon kawali and ensaladong seaweed, you know, look at that. Perfect with like grilled stuff, so I'll have it with a barbecue. Mm. 
nice and briny. It's got a little bit of ginger in it as well. Let's try the ginata ang langka. Stew jackfruit till it pulls apart. Honestly, one of the best pairs with the rice. Mmm. That's pretty good. You can taste the coconutiness in there. And also, I got some tinolang ista. Alright, pretty light. Light gingeriness to it, you know, that typical tinola flavor. Some of the fish aruni. You know, this fish kind of dry, but that's okay. Mm. And I have no idea what this juice is. Do you know, Yambi? Oh, pandam. Oh, so nice and refreshing. This is the life, Yambi, you know? Just cruising down the river, chowing down some food, kind of, not gonna lie. The buffet was kind of chaotic, like everyone just kind of crowded in before the boat was moving. But you know, that's okay. They kept on refilling the station anyway. Let's keep cruising. She got the rid of <laughs> Yeah. Woo! You really said moves, best friend. You really yeah. said moves. Why don't you treat yourself with some kahanin? Some already had a coke Yeah, yeah, there's stuff like a kuchinta, suman, banana, and what's this one? Banana cake? Yeah, banana cake. The lack of AC is just getting to me, and that dancing was just so hot. But that was a lot of fun, you know. Our driver was actually telling us that Lobok's like the music capital of Bohol, and it, you can clearly see why. Um, just a little break from eating, but the jungle is truly jungling. There's a slight breeze which we're really liking because we're like really sweaty. But apparently the river is actually meant to be a bit more emerald green. But our driver was telling us because of the heavy rains, a bit of sediment has deposited <laughs> through the river. So it's a bit murky right now. But it's nice to know that it is even more beautiful than it already is. Do you think it's back? fact about the blood compact statue it's not actually the site of the blood compact they only found that out in 2014 uh, funny story because this blood compact statue is actually made by a national artist 
but um, they were actually debating whether or not to sell the land next to the blood compact site. But apparently, once they found out that the blood compact site here is not the actual site, they sold the land and built that hotel. So now we're just left with a sculpture. And the actual site in Lawai doesn't actually have much, but fun fact. I have a fun fact. What? You know that church we went to? I couldn't go in unless I put on pants. But you know who they let in who had short shorts? Take a guess. Take a cheeky guess. The white people. Mmm, the hypocrisy. Wow. Mm. I just got hate crime by my own people. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm going to the pool so fast. Let's go to the pool. <laughs> Why, hello there. Oh, you know, we're just capping off the tour, ending it with a bit of a swim in our pool right outside our room. But um, yeah, that was a really nice, full on day of exploring Bohol. We did so much all at once. We were so tired, but it was great. I guess we didn't really have too much food in this video, but. We'll see where dinner takes us. I'm gonna go for a little swim a bit more. Please, no man spread it. Tight squeeze. We are ending our very intense Bohol adventure with dinner uh, at Jose Panglao. I am very excited. You see the amazing singers, Yambi. Top tier. We mostly got seafood because obviously we're in Bohol. We're next to the sea. Gotta get the seafood. Very excited. Are you excited, Yambi? Alright, let's see. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Okay, starting with one of my favorite crustaceans. Is it prawns or shrimp? I don't even know what the difference is. We got ours cooked in a buttery garlic sauce and I'm so excited because I just love this kind of sauce when it comes to like pairing it with seafood. You know, it's just so thick and luscious and the way it's just, the rice is just gonna soak it up. Ooh, I'm so excited. We got a bucket for shells. So eat with your hands if you want. Okay, I've de-shelled all my prawns. I'm excited. Pair it with some rice. That's absolutely soaked in that sauce. That is really, really special. It's like super buttery. It has that like that flavor of the prawns. Like it's really coming through. And there's a bit of chili in there, but it's not spicy or anything. Not gonna lie, I'm probably gonna have all of this. Like, I'm just gonna have it with all my rice because it's just, it's just that delicious. I need that in a drawer. Scallop time. I also really, really, really love scallops, but because they're so like tiny and expensive, I don't really get to eat them that often. So when I do, it's a bit of a special day. So yeah, this these ones are really tiny. This one, I think we requested for like the actual butter and garlic sauce. Let's just have it with no rice, just because it's so small and perfect. Mmm, that's a good scallop. You can actually like taste the scallop, you know, it has like a bit of a chew, a little bit of a bounce. But you can taste like the nice, like ever so slight smokiness. That's really nice. I could have one million of those little scallops. It's an absolute feast, I just realized. We got like so many dishes. Let's do the non-seafood dish. I really, really wanted to try this. I've never had this before. Kilawin na kambing. It's a kilaw of goat. If you know what a kilaw is, it's basically like, I hate to use the analogy, but it's like Filipino ceviche. You know, ceviche is Peruvian kilaw. There, I said it. This is basically cured in vinegar and some citrus as well. And it's got some like ginger and some onion and a bird's eye chili as well. Mm. 
No, no, that's good. This is like goat meat. This has been cooked in vinegar. Really acidic. It's got the aromatic from the ginger and the onion. Oh my gosh, this is really nice. Follow it up with a San Miglai. Next one. Um, we need our veggies, Yandy. So we had to get the uh, local specialty, Nilao Oi. It's a pretty big bowl, I gotta say. It's basically just like a very simple chicken broth with ginger and uh, cornucopia. Uh, oh, speaking of ginger, that's a whole ginger bulb right there. Corn cornucopia, corn, <laughs> cornucopia of <laughs> Because it has corn. Um, and some, you know, eggplant, string beans, squash, um, onions, okra, yeah. tomato. It's just kind of... Mmm. Yummy, yummy. And some chili. Uh-huh. Okra. It's super simple, but it gets the job done in terms of getting your five plus a day intake, you know? Really lovely. Next one, one of our favorite adobos of all time. Adobo kusit. They also added some squid ink, so it's kind of a bit blacker than your normal adobo. It's got the bay leaf, it's got some other aromatics like scallion and uh, capsicum. Let's, let's taste. Mm. <laughs> up. Taste it with some rice aruni. Mmm, I really like that. It has a signature taste of the uh, vinegar, soy, kind of sweet flavor of a typical adobo, but it's got a, like a little seafoody tang to it, which I really love. It's got a lot of like veggies, which provide some crunch and texture and different flavor as well. I'm gonna have another bite. Mmm, yum. Time for some catfish. It's fried, and I'm just gonna have it with a simple, the classic Filipino sausawan of toyamansi, toyo soy sauce, calamansi, and some chili as well. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Mmm, has like a light crunch and a super, super soft, moist. You can still feel like the flakes, but it's not like a flaky, like dry fish. And the toyo mansi really like acts as a nice uh, umami little addition. Dad just gave me his little own concoction of patis mansi, basically calamansi, but with patis fish sauce. Apparently it goes really well with the catfish and I do love fish sauce so I'm sure this is gonna be good. No doubt about it. Mm. It does go really well. Has a nice like seafood salty umaminess to it. Final dish of our journey through the seas. Tuna belly. One of my favorites. Let's just get some for ourselves, honestly. I'll just immediately go and get, get give it with a toyamansi because you know. Mmm, yeah. Very nice and smoky. It's a decently juicy uh, tuna belly, especially it goes well with the toyo mansi. Because obviously like I associate tuna with like either sashimi, which is fine, but also canned tuna, which is like depressing, but I also have it all the time. So to have it here, like just grilled, really simple. I just love meals like this. Mm. Okay, I forgot what the skin tastes like. Oh yeah, it's nice. It's got all the burnt stuff. So you got a nice carbon <laughs> smoky flavor. That does not sound like a good description, but it's nice. I honestly thought that they forgot, but I also ordered buko juice. We are about to finish our meal, but I guess I have to finish it now. You know, ain't nothing like fresh coconut juice straight from the coconut. A must do when you're in the Philippines or anywhere in the tropics for that matter. Ah. Yeah, tropical. Uh, so yeah, that was a pretty great dinner at Jose Panglao. Delicious mm. food, delicious seafood, and what an epic, epic day of adventure. We really seized the day with those ATVs and buggies uh. and exploring the chocolate hills. And also, I forgot to show you guys, but 
<laughs> I cannot believe it. I cannot believe we didn't get one. We got three Asin Tibu Oks from that uh, Asin Tibu Ok vendor. I was literally gonna be happy if we just got one. It is one of the rarest sea salts in the world. Only five families are left that actually produce that very, very labor intensive salt. It's a very special heirloom salt in the Philippines. But I think that'll do it for today's video. Um, thank you very much for watching another one of our food and travel videos live from the South Palms Resort in Panglao, Bohol. Ooh, <laughs> See you on the next one. Bye. Goodbye.